everyone, it's Desiree, and I am back with part two, yes, already, playing catch up, with the Hero Arts monthly card kit, and this is for May 2018. So you can see you get all those silhouette stamps, dies that match both of the items. I have arrows identifying those, watercolor, washi tape, and a delicate stencil that I was not bonding with. So let's get started on the first card. So we're going to do some ink smushing. And the two colors that I'm going to use are shaded lilac and faded jeans. I'm not going to use the wilted violet. I didn't want that much purple to come in. So the shaded lilac is only going to give me just that hint of purple that I was looking for. So to do this, I grab my craft mat. I lay down my oxides because those that's the medium that I chose. Once I have it spread out, I use water. You can see how they activate when you add water to them. And I'm taking my Bristol cardstock straight down into the little puddles and lifting straight up. You can smush it, literally ink smushing, you know, meaning smush it around, turn the paper while it's down on the mat. Um, but I do like the texture when you go straight up and down and get those uh, different dots and bubbles and all of that um to me again it, it just adds texture to your cardstock now i chose bristol you can do this with regular cardstock as well i did use my heat gun to heat set these if you look on the back of the stamp set too if you got this it'll actually you can build a tree with all of these branches so i'm not going to build a complete tree but I am going to build half of a tray, if that makes sense. So I'm first going to grab the trunk and I'm using my Tonic Studios Tim Holtz stamp platform and I'm falling in love. Um, I, w I'm, I do apologize for the glare that I'm having here. Uh, the room is in, again, in process of getting set up the way that I've dreamed of. So hopefully we will no longer have those. I'm very excited. So just bear with me. I do apologize for that video quality. I'm using also my Versamark ink to stamp my images because I want these to be solid black. Um, to me, the Versafine Black Onyx is the best ink for that. Uh, you only have to go a couple times where some inks you may have to go five or six. So I love creating, but I'm also lazy. So we're just going to go with this. Plus, since I'm using my Versafine, I'm also going to be able to use my clear embossing powder, which is also what I wanted to do. So you can see I'm actually building. I'm choosing some branches. You know, now technically you want to go with the largest on the bottom and then the smaller ones coming on the top. Um, but they go together really well. Even this one where I'm creating somewhat of a top, it just goes right down into the trunk of the tray. Now, I should have probably gone to the other side as well, but that didn't have anything to do with laziness. That just had to do, this is what I saw when I was creating this card. I added the adorable little squirrel on one of the branches because he was just too cute to not forget and I'm adding a few butterflies coming off the tree as well I'm going to use the sentiment thinking of you so yes everything that's on this card I actually stamped all at once and then I'm going to use my clear embossing powder so you just have the ink smushing in the back and again I chose oxides you can choose choose any water reactive ink could be the, the regular distress inks it could be if you have stampin up inks so any type it could be markers i do have a video on that when i did my ink smushing technique so as long as it's water reactive you can get some of these res or the same results i do just like the oxides because of the way they react okay enough about that so I grabbed my Penny Black Antique Frame dies, the largest one, and I'm setting that in place, and I'm going to then die cut this piece out. Now, I wanted to make sure that the trunk passed it, and I am trying these new blenders. I think they've been out for a while. They're new to me um, for by Nuvo, and they're sponge blenders, and 
Yeah, I love them. Um, what is great about these is one, their size, two, the feel, and three, you can wash them out and reuse them. So, and they do wash very well and the ink does not stay in it. So I'm going to, you're probably going to see more of them. Um, I'll have one for each color family. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're great. I really like the way that it felt. I used my double-sided foam tape to attach this panel, and I did use faded jeans around the outside with the Nouveau <laughs> blending sponge. Should have told you that. And now I'm using my art glitter glue, and I'm just putting lots of dots. I got carried away, but I really wanted a lot of these crystals. These are the Sparkling Crystals by Studio Katya. And I just placed them all throughout the tree and then coming out with the butterflies. And that is pretty much card number six. For card number seven, I was still in an ink smooshing mood. This time I'm choosing warm lipstick and antique linen. Now, a lot of people think, you know, antique linen, it's like an ivory. Really, it's got a, to me, it's got a yellow base to it. So when I'm mixing this with worn lipstick, I'm going to get a coral color. So, but it's going to be soft. So I wanted to stay very pastel. But you can see how faint that color is going to be. So I'm going to heat set this. I'm going to get that dry because then the next layer I want to put over this is just going to be the warm lipstick. So I'm going to clean off my craft mat. Yep, need to wash that towel. But clean off that craft mat. And then I'm going to put down my warm lipstick, spray it with some water, and then I'm going to go straight down into this as well. So again, I do apologize. The lighting is really off, um, but that's close. We're still working on that, but that'll be fixed too. I'm so excited. So I'm going to again use the fancy die and I'm going to surround it with my lawn fawn the largest stitched rectangle die that I have and I'm going to run that through my die cutting machine I wanted to make sure that it was straight now I got kind of a little bit crazy with this when I saw these colors and the softness I do pull in another stamp I know that will make some people upset but you can use anything that's in your stash okay but you know, this stamp set, this kit did challenge me. So sometimes I do have to go off to the left or the right and pull in things from the stash other than my ink mediums. So I do apologize. But you can replace this with anything else that you have in your stash. You all know I love the grunge. I love the vintage. Um, so I chose this stamp. Now this stamp will be linked below. It's actually by Art Stamp Company. Um, and it's actually called background and then some French words that come off of it. Um, I do use it in my junk journals and my art journals a lot, but I really like that. I chose the ice spruce for my background or for the ink for that stamp. For some reason, I just saw a lot of gray when it came to this. So this one was definitely an in process type video because I kind of just went where I wanted to go with it. I'm going to use my fun foam and my double-sided tape that I get from, believe it or not, Uline.com. It's awesome, and it'll never go anywhere. Um, it's a little pricey, but I do like the way that it works when it comes to my fun foam applications. So for my sentiment, I chose a piece of gray cardstock from my stash and my Versamark ink, and I'm going to use um, actually my clear embossing powder. So I didn't want the sentiment stark white. I didn't want the sentiment stark black. So to get a happy medium, we're going with a charcoal. And that's just using your VersaFine ink along with a clear embossing powder. It will go darker. I've pulled in my Fiskars 9-inch paper trimmer because I cannot cut sentiment straight. I can cut anything else straight, but I cannot cut these straight. And that wire in there just helps me so much. That is the only thing that I use that paper trimmer for. Yeah, I'm crazy. I'm going to use my scissors just to cut this out on an angle. And I'm going to put some foam squares on the back of this. 
I wasn't quite sure how far out I was going to go when it came to this sentiment, so I just put down a few, realizing that we're going to cut one off, which is fine because it was at a perfect spot to be cut off. And we're just going to set that down towards the bottom right of the card. I did curl up the tip of the side cut banner that I created. And we'll just set that down into the corner. And that is card seven. So for card number eight, yep, we see a lot of green going on here. So I grabbed a green cardstock from my stash and I cut it through my die cutter with my wonky stitch die. And that piece is cut at one and a half inches wide. In the kit, you got this beautiful washi tape. Now, some were different, so there's different styles. So the one in your kit may be different than mine. So I'm going to position this, making sure that the leaves branches are going up. That's why I was checking that against my background. And I'm going to put two strips down. And I wanted to make sure that they were straight, but in the center. They are going to overlap in the center, and that's okay. Because I'm going to use one of my tape runners to put down some glue and then I'm going to use the ribbon that comes in our kit that's wrapped around our stamp set and dies when we get it having a problem with a little straggler piece there and then this is the ribbon that I just want that to sit kind of on top of this so it's almost like a, a monochrome of greens that I'm creating there and it's just a border that's going to sit on the card I was very much inspired when it came to this kit, and it took a while for me to do this, to get, to get that inspiration going. But what really inspired me, and when I say inspiration, I will literally sit there and stare at the stamp set. Um, I do not, I try not to go on to YouTube, which means I have a lot of videos to get caught up on, um, because I get inspired by them. Um, but there have been comments of of things that I've done so I do try to stay away from that this was something that I was inspired of these beautiful organic leaves um, they were absolutely gorgeous um, very delicate but yet very strong when working with them so as I kept on staring at the stamp set and the dies I just lay out everything on my table and what inspired me were these leaves and the branches the, the branches and the fancy dye. Um, those were the items that really jumped out at me. Don't get me wrong, I love, you know, everything else. But again, there's always just something specific that makes us jump out and start moving. So I placed this down on my panel. I did use a glue eraser um, because I got carried away with the... <laughs> with the tape runner on the edge and I didn't want that glue sticking out the sentiment that I'm using is it's the little things that count um, and that's very true so I do love this sentiment I'm going to put double-sided foam tape on one side of this sentiment banner because it is coming off of the green strip that I created that is already raised with the double-sided foam tape so we're going to set that in place And that was our card. I'm sorry, I looked away for a second. So that was card number eight. Card number nine, I have to say it's um it's very much tied with my favorite, um, which is our last card. So I grabbed a die, a circle die from my stash. I wanted a circle, and I'm gonna take these branches and I'm going to create a wreath. Yes, it can be done. So there was this, this one specific branch had an awesome circle or curve to it. So I'm using that and I'm stamping it in four sections, left to right, top to bottom. So it's almost like north, south, east, west. So now I've got my quarter set up. I'm grabbing the next stamp that I wanted to use and I'm going to now stamp that along the pencil line. And the stamping that I'm doing is actually covering up the pencil line. Thank goodness, because I did not want to erase anything. Although there's a section that I see now that I should have erased. Oh, well, that's okay. We'll do that later. 
Then I'm grabbing the very tiny, tiny branches just to add. And that's to fill in this one spot that's just very much open. And we're going to set those in place. I am using my black Versafine ink because of course we're going to use the clear embossing powder. So some may say that this is maybe a little goth. <laughs> maybe I do like that too. Again, grunge, goth, vampire, that type of vintage stuff. Yes, that's really me, believe it or not. So once that heat, once that is heat set, we want to make sure that's dry. The card was not hurt as I waved it around but I wanted to make sure that was dry. I grabbed that scrap piece of gray cardstock, again with the sentiment, it's the little things that count, and I'm using my clear embossing powder again. Again, I didn't want, the wreath is already harsh, I didn't want to continue with the harshness. So putting this gray strip sentiment on there, it kind of, at the same time, makes it pop, but then at the same time, it kind of pulls it back, if that makes sense. I don't know if it does, but let's go with it. So I'm adding some foam squares to the back of my banner. I have um, curved up the edges. And to get this shape, I used my Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiment Banner dies. So I'm going to put that below because I really did like, and I really do like this wreath, and I just did not want to cover it. I'm going to use my double-sided foam tape and prop this up onto my four and a quarter by five and a half top folding card bases. And all the previous cards that I have made so far in this video were made using that standard card base as well, but um, A2 size. So now I pulled out some stickles. You saw that in the beginning, and this is actually called Christmas Red. I am now going to put or apply the stickles and I'm going to drag it as I push some of the product out to cover the black leaves. And we do this to the majority of the leaves. I did want to keep some of them black, but a good portion of them, I wanted them to be red. So as I was looking at it, I had a huge center. So I continued with the stickles. So we have large and small dots just being put throughout the center of this wreath. And I think it added a really nice pattern to the center of it. It's almost like the top of a canning jar. Hmm. That one's my second. This one's actually my first. So I've already prepped my panel. I used my Penny Black Vintage Frame die to cut that out. I have used my anti-static tool. And the sentiment that I'm going to use is thank you for the beautiful moments. And I'm going to stamp that down. And yes, it will be clear embossed. <laughs> We're going to heat set that with our heat tool. And then we're going to get ready. So I grabbed one of my Memento Dew Drops, and this is called London Fog. Now remember, Memento inks was really the first inks for the alcohol markers um, when they started to be the craze. Memento was the ink. I have all of the colors of Memento. I do like their inks um, is because they are vintage looking. You don't get that solid impression. And that's exactly what I was going for. I'm using some of the branches and creating a border going down the bottom of the card below the sentiment. And you can see I have one of my Prismacolor alcohol markers there. So I don't want that solid image. I want it to be soft. Now, just like with any of our other inks, the, that, this gray will dry back because it does look kind of dark here, but that's okay. This is actually called Blue Slate by Prismacolor. And on every leaf, I'm going to do a flicking motion. On the larger leaves, it'll get two. On the smaller ones, I'm just going to flick off of it just as I am there. To me, when I saw these branches and I just, to get ready for something like this, I just stamp away. 
um, and see, okay, what does this look like and what does this look like? So if you remember a previous video, I took a vine and made it look like rosebuds. Um, this to me, and I can't remember the, <laughs> what, what I'm remembering, um, but my grandmother used to have them. Um, and they used to be all throughout her field, uh, pussy willows, the willow trees. I think that's what they're called. Please somebody correct me if I am wrong, but that's what that reminded me of. And just adding, even though it's blue slate, it's got this, it's almost like a periwinkle. It, it just really matched. So that's what I created on the bottom. And I just had enough of my double-sided foam tape to prop this up. I did use my vintage photo as I was rambling there around the outer part of this image and I pulled in my gray mist jewel nouveau drops because again the bottom was gray I wanted to continue that not sure what I was doing there but that is our last card so I hope you did enjoy these I'm sorry you waited a while for this video but sometimes if the video is coming out late that just means I'm kind of I'm being challenged and I think that's a good thing um it should not stop us from creating, um, but that's that's kind of your clue. And this kit kind of did that to me. Um, but I try, you know, again, I apologize. I pulled in another stamp um, outside of the kit, um, but sometimes we just have to do that because we're, we're here to create um, and do the best that we can. So I hope you did like this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. By all means, if you see that subscribe button down there and it's still red and it doesn't say subscribed, make sure you hit that button and stay tuned for more videos and be part of the little community that I have going on here. Although we keep growing, so I can't say thank you enough. All of the products that I did use outside of the kit will be listed down below. If you have any questions or comments, um, please, I enjoy reading them and I truly, truly do appreciate all of your feedback. Um, it, it's helped me to grow. It's helped me to do better and it's going to continue to help me to do better for you. So, but by all means, leave them down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. I do answer every single comment in some way, shape or form. I hope everybody had a great weekend and always remember, be creative.